Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Bearable Bull here. And I'm excited to present to you today this aggressively average content for you as we have a powerful interview with the lead privacy strategist at Hedera Hashgraph, Deborah Farber. First, before we get into that powerful interview, I want to show you some upfront information and updates about Hedera Hashgraph and why it continues to be my favorite project and one of the largest holdings in my portfolio. I've been invested since 1.8 cents and Hedera continues to lead by example. I personally believe Hedera has a real chance of being a quote Ethereum killer and what I mean by that is that it will surpass Ethereum one day in my opinion and I think Deborah Farber probably agrees. You'll get a little taste of that in this interview as well. First, we have Credible Crypto showing a new governing council member for Hedera Hashgraph is ServiceNow. ServiceNow is a cloud computing software platform that currently serves 80% of Fortune 500 companies. This is 100% confirmed. A company that services 80% of Fortune 500 companies is now a governing council member for Hedera Hashgraph. Ladies and gentlemen, this is powerful. This is something you all need to understand. I'm always bullish on cryptos that will outperform what is established in the market. And Hedera, in my opinion, right now, is similar to buying Ethereum back at $40. No ifs, ands, or buts about it, in my opinion. That's still left to be determined. But plenty is still yet to be released. Next, from HBAR to the moon, ServiceNow has $136 billion as a market cap. It has customers from all over the world and many of them are leaders in their industries. It provides workflow improvement software services, which now will integrate with Hedera with full set of new services, HCS, HTS, and Smart Contracts 2.0. Next, just a week and a half ago, Hashport, built on Hedera, went live an interoperability solution. And guys, the continued announcements, in my opinion, make it the perfect storm for Hedera to take over in quarter four and quarter one, 2022. We have Deborah Farber showing this. This is her Hedera white paper on how distributed ledger technology serves as a Web3 privacy architecture. It's extremely well written, and I highly suggest all of you take a look at it. In addition, Hedera is currently priced at $0.40, cents, available on exchanges like Binance, KuCoin, Bitrue, Uphold, and others. Please get involved if you're interested, and I bet after this interview, you probably will be. With all that being said, guys, let's get into this powerful interview with Deborah Farber. Please enjoy it. Webinar is now live. Webinar is being recorded, and the rascals start trickling in one by one. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody from wherever you're from today. Um, I am genuinely honored and humbled to be here um, with the opportunity to speak with um, Deborah Farber from Hedera Hashgraph. Um, Deborah, what I'd like to say before anything is thank you and um. You know, some of the audience, they may not be familiar with uh, yourself and what you do over at Hedera. So would you like to give a very quick introduction as far as like your role over there? Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm, I'm technically an independent contractor. Um, mm -hmm. I have my own uh, company called Principled LLC, but I serve mm -hmm. as privacy strategist at Hedera uh, in a, more of an external thought leadership uh, perspective. So I'm working really closely with the marketing team and uh, to understand all the different uh, components of the Hedera network and, and network services. 
And mm -hmm. um, I've been writing a white paper, which I swear to God, I've been talking. It's like when white paper, when white paper at this point. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, it's completely done. It's like literally and it's final legs of being reviewed and at layout at this moment. Like I was really hoping it would come out today so that mm -hmm. I could be like, look, this is what I do. Right. <laughs> um, but uh, it's probably, I mean, I, I want to say I'll come out later today or tomorrow, but it, it most likely will come out this week. Um, and so in it, uh, what I really, so, so I could go, I could expound on this, but like my role mm -hmm. is really external thought leadership as like one sentence. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know how much you want me to expound beyond sure, that. As, mu as much as we need to understand it a little more, because everyone in here, um, they're, they're, they they want to know as much as they can, you know, so sure. we could get as dense as possible. Sure. So so Adara has such a focus on enterprise uh, mm -hmm. adoption, enterprise tech. That's really, you know, we kind of have this belief that once we've got, um, I mean, this is how the tokenomics work, that once we have, uh, you know, a lot of throughput, a lot of um, uh, the, the, a lot of network use that is that's coming from um, enterprise adoption, uh, mm -hmm. it's really going to be some step function, you know, that's going to, to make the, um, not only the price soar, which makes the, the, uh, company more secure, uh, but to, uh, you know, to everybody's benefit, right. The, to increase the value of the network, you need, you need a lot of, uh, enterprise adoption. So where do mm -hmm. I come from enterprise? That's my thing, uh, mm -hmm. uh, B2B, um, and privacy. I've been doing privacy for 16 years. Uh, yes. And and in Europe, you probably refer to it more as data protection. They're really kind of those things are uh, opposite sides of the same coin. Um, and we could get into that in a second. But uh, enterprises really need to comply with global data protection laws that also mm -hmm. enshrine our right to. Well, they don't enshrine our right. They protect our our privacy rights as well. And so. Um, in, in order to have enterprise adoption, you need to meet a whole bunch of, uh, I don't wanna say compliance uh, requirements, because this is really something that should be part of core strategy. Uh, but you, know, you have to meet a certain bunch of requirements. And what I did when I set out to write this white paper was to, I, I really saw a gap of knowledge in the crypto community as to what does privacy mean? What are its implications? What does data protection mean? And how does it at all relate to Web3? And that's, okay. Pretty much, you know, I kind of reached out to Hedera and they reached out to me. It was kind of like one of these, you know, I was tweeting a little bit when I found out about them. They're like, hey, do you want to have a conversation here? And so <laughs> That's just, crazy. beautiful magic happened when I yeah. when I left uh, Amazon and, you yeah. know, all of a sudden I, I had this wonderful opportunity to be able to uh, educate and, and help mm -hmm. uh, people really understand, like, what does it mean when we talk about privacy? Because yeah, I, I guarantee true. you, it's way more than transactional privacy, where mm -hmm. we are just looking at is, did someone see how I spent my cat or, you know, I spent my crypto. Um, mm -hmm. It's way beyond that, right? When we are talking about Facebook and uh, feeling like surveillance capitalism or the advertising industry, like none of that has anything to do with Web3, right? It's, we still need to take the challenges of Web2 and and fix them and and when we're as we're building this new web three ethical you know reliable trust world we need yes. to um, make sure we're baking in the right privacy and data protection mm -hmm. uh controls and something interesting that you said is like global compliance like across different jurisdictions and things yes. like that like me personally i love assets that are that are looking to be compliant from day one a lot of people they're very rebellious they're they come from that background where it's like let's get rid of governments and banks and myself coming from the 2017 bull run i know damn well that we're not getting rid of governments and banks and all these institutions because i got burned investing in the things that i thought were going to replace them all right but that's another oh, story okay, okay. okay. That, that's another you should be story interviewing another you. i want to hear about no, no, <laughs> we will one day we will one day but um so i've taken a more mature route when it comes to crypto and saying all right we're gonna work with the system to help us out of whatever situations we're in so we could better the world right so that's what i'm really looking at but what are some things that that go into making things globally compliant and before we started i actually wanted to know just for everyone in the audience as well what is the difference between privacy and data protection and, and how deep does it go as far as privacy with Hedera and what exactly does that mean? Okay, well, those are two separate questions. So the yeah. first is, um, 
Uh, and I'm going to forget the second one. So you're going to have to repeat that. No worries. <laughs> I can't no hold worries. those two thoughts at once. But the first, uh, so I'll answer the first one first. Mm -hmm. um, so privacy is, I mean, privacy has so many meanings, so many different things. So I will say that in the context of history, uh, when we first had privacy torts, which is a legal, like when do you, when do you have a civil right against somebody else, right? Like, um, that's kind of what a tort is, 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 is kind mm -hmm. of your civil, civil rights. God, I, I'm going back to law school here. How do I define tort? Um, skip that. So where we had these concepts of like, you have a right to be let alone and you have a, you know, and not be annoyed by people. Mm -hmm. Modern day equivalent, look at can spam, right? You're not allowed to spam the hell out of people. You have a right to not have spam, basically, at least mm -hmm. in the United States. And then, um, so then you have other torts like, uh, you know, the right to not to ha not have someone misappropriate your name and likeness and use it for selling mm. of their product, right? Like, yeah. these are things that make sense to us, right? It's like, really, privacy is kind of like centered around rights around our own identity and how we're represented in different spaces. And that's kind of one view of what privacy means. Um, you know, others is like a right not to be surveilled, right? Like, there, it, it all kind of comes down to this fundamental, like, who like I should have control over like my own space and whatever that means, my personal space or attributes about myself that are known uh, in a particular context. Mm -hmm. um, I want to make clear, these are about attributes that are known. And while I, the reason I'm emphasizing that is I believe anonymity, like pure anonymity, like to anonymize, like that is taking it out of a privacy mm -hmm. problem because you no longer have a practice. You no longer have an identity attached to anything. Yeah. Um, I don't consider that a privacy thing. I think I, I look at anonymity as a free speech thing. We could we could talk about that separately, so I can get back on track yes, with this yes, yes. this topic. Um, data so so in the United States, we in our constitution, we don't have this concept of privacy enshrined in our constitution. Mm -hmm. We've had some. Uh, We've had some interpretations where we say there's a penumbra of rights and this mm -hmm. has been held and, you know, but there's no direct, you know, you have a right to be let alone, you have a right to be, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we have a right to freedom, liberty, property, right? uh, all of these things, but we, you know, privacy is not one of them that's like directly mentioned mm -hmm. in the con US Constitution. It is, however, you know, in, in the Europe, in Europe's um, Constitution and um, the European Union. That. I yeah. didn't know that. That's very interesting. Right. So if you already have the right, and we do have it in the California Constitution as well. There might be some other states. I just happen to know California has it. So it's not impossible to do. It's just it's just interesting. Like that's so now you have that right. You can enshrine it. You could you could add uh, additional protections uh, later yeah. on, whatever. And so the EU kind of took this approach. We already have a right to privacy. Now, data protection is all the rules that will protect your right to privacy, your rights to transparency, your rights to all your other rights. So GDPR is not just about privacy. It's mm -hmm. a GDPR being the general data protection regulation that the EU has become the gold star of what privacy regulation should look like. Uh, and we use the word privacy here in the United States a little bit to mean a lot of things. Um, mm -hmm. The EU, it's got a little more of a definition that's, that's specific where the right is privacy and data protection is all the privacy security portability, like all the rules around, I guess, ethically uh, using um, personal data. Got it. And then Got personal it. data is anything that's linked or linkable to an identifier. So mm -hmm. we're talking anything that's linked to my name, anything that's linked to, well, I'm not in Europe right now, so maybe that's not a great idea, but anything, uh, Jordan, are you in the UK? I am in the UK. Okay, I'll use. Oh, you're the UK is not part of the EU anymore. No. <laughs> wow. wow, that's incredible. That's it. Rub salt in the wounds, Deborah. That's it. Yeah, and the UK. Okay, and the UK is doing some interesting things right now in terms of kind of chipping away at some of those rights. So, uh, you know, I'm not following that as closely, but um, so yeah, the EU basically has a, um, a whole lot of principles about, you know, and it's principle based as opposed to the EU. So you'll have a principle that doesn't sound like a rule. It kind of sounds like guidelines, but it's not, you know, you're, it, it's supposed to give the company flexibility in how they achieve compliance or, you know, that commitment to the customer or the individual, you know, they call it data subjects, but, um, 
I mean, I could, I'm going to just keep talking if you don't, <laughs> if you don't ask me another question. No, no. <laughs> It's all very interesting. And it's a lot because this is all back end things that are important infrastructure behind projects that need to be thought about um, that us common man, we don't we don't have to think or just like, okay, look at these projects. We like it. Right. Well, for sure. me personally, I ha I do have to tell you a little secret. Um, and my my VIPs know this. My channel knows this. I actually proposed to Hedera Hashgraph recently. I got I bent the knee. I gave her a ring. She said yes. So we're we're in a happily committed relationship. I'm not looking to get rid of my Hedera, right? Because I really like the project. Um, but funny. there there are plenty of reasons why. Um, and one of them, um, and it's gonna kind of tie in with what I was speaking uh, about earlier. One of them is Alliance Block. Um, I noticed that there is a partnership between Hedera and Alliance Block. And um, yeah. you talk about the across different jurisdictions and things like that. I know that Alliance Block is aiming to be the first globally compliant decentralized capital market and essentially like kind of merge DeFi with traditional finance together. Right. So right. Right. the reason... The reason that's so interesting is because we're in the XRP community. We, we've big fans of XRP and um, we have the Flare Network that will be releasing their Spark tokens when the network officially launches within a couple months. You know, we're all frustrated because of the delay and things like that. But they did release that they're partnered with Alliance Block to help bridge things together right like me i'm not the techiest dude i, I don't have the best technical know-how and explaining things but i know that connections are made between projects like little wink wink thing My, <laughs> what i'm curious yeah. to know is um let's see what i'm curious to know is because i did see that hugo the ceo of flare had a thinking crypto interview um talking about how current bridge models have a concentration of risk and I know that right. Alliance Block has to do with bridges. What I was curious to know is, um, will Alliance Block be something that can connect Hedera and Flare Networks together in the future? Right. Um, so, I mean, I definitely think that it's, um, it's important that there are bridges between public networks um, because it's, it's beneficial for the whole ecosystem. Uh, mm -hmm. that assets on one network can be ported over to or you know accessed by uh you know other networks right i mean so that's it, it, the, the the best part of that is like the portability data portability and so for me this this meets a uh a data protection eu data protection requirement of that you should you be allowed to be able to take your data from one provider and port it over to another so data portability for me is you know obviously hugely important um, unfortunately, as an independent contractor, I don't have specific insight into Alliance Block's plans, um, mm -hmm. but it is great to see the interoperability in the broader ecosystem as a whole. Very you know? nice. So I, I could, I just don't know more information in, in this particular instance. No worries, no worries. But um, I'm just glad that you addressed that point because this is how I like um, the community to think. It's like, even if we don't know for sure, we can draw connections and, and look at different use cases and how things go. And then we can ask the experts like yourself. And regardless of whether we learn it right away, we have it in our minds, right? So that's very powerful. And thank you for, for stating that. Um, one thing I do want to ask as well is that um, I'm personally extremely bullish on Hedera NFTs, right? I'm very, very <laughs> bullish on them. I think they're extremely undervalued. Um, I'm aware that, that um, Immutable Holdings holds the nft.com domain name and jordan freed um is i believe the ceo of immutable holdings so that what that tells me is nft.com will run on hedera right that's very nice i mean that's my assumption it would seem silly <laughs> not to given that right. jordan you know jordan knows all the benefits of hedera like you know so i can only imagine it, it you know he there there seems to be a um a reason that he's not you know, stating who it runs on and I'm, you know, we'll let him make that, uh, yeah. make it known why, you know, in, in the future probably doesn't want to answer all the questions about it, Dara, right now. It's not his focus, to be honest. This is just my guess. I've actually never met him, but, um, you know, uh, I think the world of what he's building. Very nice. 
what what I do want to ask though, um, to kind of go along those lines is, are there any Hedera NFT projects that you're currently looking at that you see as, oh, that's very interesting? Yeah, you know, <clears throat> so I think NFTs are really cool and I think they're cool concepts, but the area that I'm playing in again is the area, like I'm such a geek about privacy, security, data protection, governance, that kind of space. Um, that I really like the NFTs. I, I, it, okay, I love them all. Okay, I can't pick between them because to me, the different JPEGs and you know different iterations. Like so far, I've only played around where I've won something in a competition. I haven't gone buying right. anything um, because the focus that I've had again is privacy. So companies like Acor, which I did do a Hedera um, uh, NFT. Uh, related uh, webinar on. So you could find this, it's on, on Hedera's uh, website, but Acor uses NFTs for uh, for its rights hash product, which actually <clears throat> stores your digital rights as an NFT, right? Mm -hmm. And so areas like that, they're using NFTs in ways, not only transferring value externally between wallets of, of, um, of art, Right. Obviously, we know it's way beyond art and it's real estate. It's other things we could tokenize, fractionalize things. Um, but for me, I'm really ex most excited about companies like Acor that are using NFTs for enterprise real world use cases, um, mm -hmm. you know, because th th it's just it, it's it's taking this technology and applying it back to a real world problem that a company is trying to, to fix. And that's mm -hmm. that can be like real real-time auditability, right? If you want, instead of having to do all this discovery to figure out where your personal data is and what rights are attached and what purposes you're allowed to use the data for and all that, you could kind of deploy this, this um, deploy NFTs basically. And, and uh, he's actually using uh, Hedera consensus service for some and Hedera token, token service for others because you don't always need the tokens to go off you know, be transferred to someone else. Sometimes being a native token, uh, you know, enables a lot of benefit as well. And um, I think, you know, rights hash by Acor is a perfect example of that. So not to say I'm playing around in that space, but I'm definitely putting my attention more towards mm -hmm. these um, corporate uses. I don't want to say practical. Art is so practical. I, I mean, these enterprise corporate uses of NFTs are what interests me the most. I know what you mean. It's more about the utility of them as opposed to the speculative value of some some of these pieces of art, right? So right, that's... right. And I love the fact that people are playing and having so much fun with the art. It's bringing in so many um, different, you know, members of the ecosystem. It, it's bringing in a completely f uh, fresh area. I'm even trying to get my sister who, who you know, who dabbles in... Um, you know, for fun, uh, doing the painting lately. And I'm like, you should turn those into NFTs. And she's like, what are NFTs? I'm like, okay, you go get really, really, really into, you know, NFTs and we'll learn this because it's an area I'm not giving as much of my attention when it comes to like, you know, uh, the space. I, 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 there's only so many hours of the day. <laughs> yes. yes, that's very true. That's very true. And it's a lot because I see, I'm still trying to figure out what XRP is, right? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But it's true. It's, it's like every single day, a new NFT launches with different property rights in each, and it can be a lot. We're still trying to figure out why we should convert our real money into internet money, which <laughs> the real money isn't so real after all, right? So it's it's yeah. it's a hard barrier of entry. And and what I need to stress to everyone in the audience is the reason we we take the time out when we have these type of discussions is so that we can continue to be one step ahead of the game. And as far as the learning curve is concerned, because these technologies, they will make an impact. They will make a core infrastructure shift into the digital age. Like a good friend of mine, um, King Solomon, and everyone in this community knows who, who he is. He's, a, he's an important contributor. He One time he stated that, um, that Hedera hash graph future proofs the future proof, right? And what I'm going to ask you is, what does that statement mean to you? Like, how can that be applied when it comes to Hedera? The reason I ask is because I don't even know what Hedera could do. I heard some interesting things the other day. And I oh, okay. Well. 
Yeah. So, um, you know, when you, when you say future proof like that, um, you know, I, it makes me wish I understood at a, at, at a Lehman level, the, mm -hmm. uh, you know, virtual voting and gossip about gossip, right? Like I, mm -hmm. I kind of just, I get the basics like the rest of you and trust in the math. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm not, I, I think I might answer it a little differently and I'll just kind of answer it as like, what do I think like the best, uh, most exciting, valuable parts uh, or different unique part of, of, of Hashgraph. And I, I'd say right now, what I'm most excited about is the ability to do microtransactions in a way that's economically viable, yes. right? And so what micro, the, because Hedera has solved the trilemma, the blockchain trilemma, and, you know, it has, you know, fast, uh, you know, uh, it, 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 it could scale, it's got the, you know, incredibly high TPS that's throttled down to 10,000 uh, TPS, mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, and it's always, um, the, the average fee is, you know, just one thousandth of a penny, which, mm -hmm by being attached to a US dollar value, what that does is it allows enterprises to really budget for the number of transactions they're expecting in a quarter, a year, whatever their budgeting you know, really entails. Um, and, and this is what enterprises need. They need some level of, I wanna say certainty, but of yeah, some level of certainty where they can budget for things and get approval. You can't do that right now for so much um, where high gas fees are, you know, cl uh, clogging up a network and making it expensive, you're not necessarily sure how to how, how much it's going to cost for a transaction of something. Um, and so for me, it's this capability to do microtransactions that's opening up completely new markets. Yes. So, uh, you know, a great example is the ability to like if I had solar on my, you know, uh, if I had a solar panels on my roof and um, you know, I, I ended up using that energy, but I had excess energy. Uh, now maybe I could sell it back to the energy grid or I could sell it to my neighbor down the street. Like mm. these are becoming economically viable. Uh, and there is a company that's working on that. And I just don't remember the name and I feel like a fool, but uh, it's okay. You, you, we, can, we can look it up. Um, the, the, the point is that this, that Hedera is able to, well, one, I love that it does those things I just said. The other is that as it's been built, and I keep repeating this um, different places, but but Jim Nasser, who is the CEO of Acor, uh, has said this to me while I was still kind of really learning the, the Hedera network services, and it resonated because it made sense. And I'm going to say the same to you. He says, what I love so much about Acor is that it meets my expectations of a real time, like engineering system, like a, a real time system. Like yeah. it, it got... Um, uh, everything works in real time, right? Like he, and, and so as, as such, he's been able to create this like real time audit capability using NFTs. Um, and that's just super commendable. So, uh, you know, things, things along those lines that really are differentiate Hedera from other networks, right? And, and we pick it apart where we'll be like, okay, so whatever that, you know, Hedera ties, Tie stuff to to fiat, okay, big deal. Or oh, okay, so they're throttling down. They, they're able to do ten thousand TPS today. But what 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 we really need to be looking at is like threading that together. What's what does it all mean? And what it means is that Hedera is a beast of a of a network that has been thoughtful uh, for the long term, the long haul. It considers itself a hundred year company, meaning it's not deploying short term thinking. It's deploying long term thinking. Uh, what do we need to do for the next, you know, the first few, you know, first phase, the second phase, right? We have a whole, we're like, yeah, we're not a hundred percent decentralized today. So people pointing that out, it's like, yeah, and we're, we, here is our plan to uh, plan towards decentralization, right? There, there's a, a stepped plan that needs to take place and happen and it's thoughtful and the company, you know, uh, is, is super transparent about it. Uh, and, you know, it's all of these things in this long-term thinking that has, has made me and the powerful tech behind it that has mm. gotten me really excited about Hedera. And I think yeah. it's gotten, you know, so many people, not just, you know, you've got your retail investors, you've got your, um, uh, but you also have like large companies as well that are just, this is something deployable and usable for public trust uh, mm -hmm. that they just don't have today. And I really like the the point you brought about the micro payments, the low mm -hmm. fees and the fast transaction times, because just the other day, 
a, a couple weeks ago, we saw that it for a one hundred thousand dollar U.S. tether transaction, it cost twenty three million dollars in gas fees. <laughs> <laughs> right so that's that's oh, 230 weird. times what you were sending in just gas feed alone right? and there's so, so many stakeholders in the network that that frustrates right so there's your um i mean as a as a as a retail speculator maybe you're not able to get your i don't know nft out of its out of you're not able to sell your nft and you want to because someone's going to buy it for more or whatever yeah. uh because it just costs too much or uh so it could affect retailers or not retailers but retail investors it could affect companies because you know it, there's less certainty in the market and they don't understand you know, how much it's going to cost them to run this program anymore right that might then impact you know institutional investors and so so this whole market is um is is congested uh, by a lot of other, um, you know, non Hedera based. Uh, <laughs> I love it. I love how you said that. Wait, so I'm going to kind of I'm going to kind of trap you with saying that real quick and really hammer that message home. We we all know that Ethereum, it, it's kind of like the mother of the crypto space, right? It birthed this entire community of, of coins, this it was smart contracts. It was the first one to do that. However, we see that it's having scalability issues and that E2.0 keeps getting pushed back a little bit, pushed back a little bit. I don't believe that anything will be an Ethereum killer because Ethereum has seg placed itself right at the heart of the global blockchain industry. It's going to survive and nothing's going to kill it. But right, I think something one day will surpass it. Do you think Hedera could be one of those coins that has the potential to surpass Ethereum? Personally, yeah. I mean, I'm putting my whole career, you know, I don't want to say my whole career, but I'm <laughs> throwing my weight to, you know, towards Hedera. I mean, this is, yeah. this is where, this is, I think the, the product is genius. Uh, I mean, you know, uh, I think Lehman is a genius. <laughs> like, uh, and I, 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 yeah, I mean, I get it as an enterprise person. Hedera makes sense to me to be used by enterprises. Now, of course, I want to make clear anyone can use Hedera. Um, but the fact that it's built as an enterprise grade network that's still affordable and available to anyone, I mean, is a huge thing. Where, where does that exist anywhere in, in, in Web2 tech? Uh, you know, just just. Oh, maybe Google, maybe, maybe you get access to their, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking here out loud, but there's very few instances where uh, the everyday person who wants to just build whatever they want to build can have access to enterprise tech uh, mm -hmm. for, for either for free or for the same price or for the, you know, generally available, uh, except maybe open source, right? Um, mm -hmm. Which, which Hedera is with the exception of the, of the patent on the, um, the hash graph itself. So, um, you know, I guess I'm reevaluating that. Um, and then the original point was, I'm trying to think, uh, hammer the point home that, oh yeah, I mean, uh, so Ethereum definitely has, I mean, that's where all the VC money has gone, right? Yeah. So you've got two factors going there. You've got um, so much money is in play that people have picked their bets that no one's kind of looking behind them to see what's coming next. Mm -hmm. um, so there's that, but there's also, you know, all the development, I don't wanna say all, but so much development has been going on in the Ethereum space. That's so much knowledge about how to build an Ethereum is, is um, you know, has been built and and that's not going away. And so, you know, I, I think Ethereum is gonna do just fine. I think it'll be do, doing well for, for years to come. I just think that there's challenges right now and, and you know, there's, there's absolutely good reasons to take a look at the Hedera network and services. Um, and I, you know, personally, I'm, I'm not going to offer anything to anyone else about how they think about, you know, what networks they use, but I'm so sold on Hedera that my, that I, I will look at, so if someone's like, look at this project, what do you think? I'm going to be like, all right, well, I'm going to look at it in the context of Hedera is what I know first. And I compare everything else against Hedera. Most people in crypto have, you know, kind of grew up in it a little more. I don't want to say most, but a lot of people. So they started with Bitcoin and then uh, Ethereum and then maybe then they grab yeah, I don't, then they move on to others like Hedera uh, and they're comparing it to what they know of Ethereum. That's just not how I I got into the space. So it's a little backwards for me, um, and I just I feel like I lucked out by really getting involved in Hedera first because now I feel like I've got the gold star of what of what a um, public trust network 
should look like and with thoughtful uh, architecture and uh, you know development ongoing development that um, I compare everything to Hedera. And that's, I think, been an easier way uh, since it's so, I, I think it's superior to most, that I think it's an easier way for me to, to see what's actually novel elsewhere and what, uh, what, what is actually um, different in a better way uh, to Hedera um, piecemeal, but you know, looking at other projects and networks. And I do think that's a big part of the problem, right? Because we in the XRP community, um, that's really where we specialize in. I, that's where I come from. But um, we're going through a lawsuit right now. Ripple's going through a lawsuit right now. And we're see the whole community has been boom exposing some corruption with Lubin and Novogratz and some SEC potential conflicts of interest. And it's a whole show that's going on in this. Like we see a lot of nonsense. So politics is playing a role like the the interest behind ethereum is playing a role on why it's exploding why it's propped up even though the tech may be antiquated um to to other solutions like hedera that's in the open market now right. before we continue i do have to re-emphasize this fact how many years do you have an experience in enterprise just oh gosh uh pfft. In enterprise privacy, security, and governance, 16 years. 16 years. Uh, I, then there was probably, yeah, I'd say about 16 years in enterprise. <clears throat> and the reason I'm stressing that point is because everyone that's listening at home, this is an expert in what she does, telling you what she believes the best solution is, right? I personally don't own any Ethereum anymore because anything I'd put in an Ether, I'd put into Hedera. Why would I? It's like, I feel like, you know, people in crypto are used to what they know and used to um, used to how things have always been. Now looking forward to how things are going to be. We're at the point where utility and adoption is going to ramp up. NFTs have definitely brought to the public eye this digital space. And people aren't going to want, you know, $23 million <laughs> transaction fees or, you know, maybe an hour to, to get your things. They want, want things that are cheap, less than a penny. It takes three seconds and there it does fit that bill. So that's, that's important. That's important guys. Hammer at home. Yes. But, um, it's important. Let's see. So there are a couple more things I really want to power through. Um, so as a powerful infrastructure project, I believe that Hedera will kill it for the years to come. Um, I got feelings about Hedera similar to when Ether was first like getting started in 2016, 17. That's that's why I proposed to Hedera, right? <laughs> so <laughs> if if Hedera would were to be successful, um, what value would it be providing to the world? And I know we kind of we kind of touched on it already, but let me let me um, let me really uh, narrow it down here. What target market what do you think the uh possibilities are as far as as far as the total market hedera can get if it happens to do what we both think it can do right so um i mean it goes back to hedera's vision uh mm -hmm. it is it aims to be the the you know the trust layer of the internet um mm -hmm. it, it's not aiming to be the best coin right it's aiming to be the trust layer of the internet and that's a bold mission and it's one that i'm like so excited by i, I joined you know i joined uh the team and it, you know because there's been so much mistrust in the web 2 world uh there's been a lack of protocols for privacy security you know trust um mm -hmm. and then so basically because you know because of the Hedera, it, it has solved the blockchain dilemma. It can achieve all the goals that blockchain set out to do, but because mm -hmm. it isn't blockchain and it's hash graph and it can do it, you know, it can do all three things all at once. Um, in the end, you know, and it's a public network, right? Not a private deployed DLT solution. It is public DLT solution. Um, the whole goal is to underlie the, you know, pretty much commerce, uh, you know, uh, uh, transactions, it, it, it could be outside of um, just financial payments. So any type of transaction at all, uh, you want to be able to trust, you want to have like no, tr not trust the other person uh, on the other side of the transaction, but still have a, a trusted result in the end. And that's what Hedera gives you, right? Like the ability to have trust where there is none 
Um, and so by being the like bottom layer uh, and that network layer and, and you know building all on top of it, it, it it's really you can inherit the trust from the network uh, with the dApps and the DAOs or any app nets or whatever you're creating on top of it. And so one of the reasons I really gravitated towards Hedera is that I've um, I've been trying to get companies in a Web2 world to really fix the problems and the privacy debt, technical debt that they've had out there for so long. And the technical debt just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And you see more mm -hmm. breaches and more, you know, um, accidents with per people's personal data uh, in a, you know, and, and so the rallying cry on my end and people, you know, in my, on my profession has been shift left and, you know, build with privacy by design and use privacy engineering principles. Um, but it's just taking so long to get enterprises to, really reverse their boat, mm -hmm. uh, including most of the companies I've worked for, yes, uh, yeah. that I'm so frustrated that I see this as an opportunity here where we're building a new world. And at the network layer, we build in the right things. We're thinking about identity differently, right? I mean, it's not just Hedera, it's the whole industry is thinking identity differently. We should mm -hmm. own our own keys, right? Not some corporation. Um, all of these, you know, decentralized identifiers and identities, um, these just you know, self-sovereign kind of perspectives, right? This is changing, but then we put it into an environment like, uh, I don't wanna say environment, like a network services, like like uh, what Hedera has to offer. And then it, uh, the end result is that you get public trust, right? Mm -hmm. So so you're gonna be inheriting that. And so it just kind of like, like Ivy, which is what Hedera is, is an English Ivy. Uh, it's gonna slowly spread around the world, spread this public trust around like the world that. until it's everywhere. And like you know, when it becomes slowly spreading to being everywhere, we don't have timeframes on that, right? Even Lehman talks about there being some step function where eventually we're not gonna necessarily even know that uh, all of a sudden this giant use case is gonna deploy to the network that completely changes the game. And no one can predict that. I mean, we, we, we can predict based on things that we see and that this is where bearable bull, you come in uh, you know, to, to serve that purpose for the retail and uh, institutional investor world. Um, it's not the world I play in. I'm, I'm, I'm here more on the tech side, but mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I think that the main, the main thing is the public trust. Yes. That, that's what everyone's going to be eventually getting from Hedera. That's the big benefit. That's the world, you know, benefit that you're going to get. And I, I say world benefit. I mean, Deepak Chopra is building on Hedera. Like Seva Love just, you know, he just announced Seva Love, and I, I mean, it's just. Communities and communities of, of 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 change agents are choosing Hedera to to build that public trust and change. Mm -hmm. So it's really exciting times. And and I love how bold Hedera is aiming to be because I tell all my students this and my audience this. I love cryptos that shoot for the stars because even if they fail, they'll land on the moon, right? Because failures like make you better and you fail upwards, right? I personally don't think there's going to fail. I think you guys have already succeeded and are being very, very humble. But here's what I'm going to say. Um, XRP, we oft, we have a saying um, in the XRP community called the Internet of Value, right? Where we, we believe we're trying to come after all the damn money. I always say that. We're after all the damn money. Well, Hedera Hashtrap is going for all the trust. The trust layer of the Internet, right? In 2017, I invested in this crypto called Substratum that was claiming to be the, the new the decentralized internet. Now that project came and went and it failed and it, you know, did some speculative price action. It was all good, but you know, people got burned. A right? failed project. I don't think Hedera is going to fail because if a failed project like this could do some explosive things with nothing, something like Adara that has proven partners, individuals like yourself, and um, much better use case and utility. I do believe there's plenty of runway for that. And um, people should be um, definitely considering educating yourselves more, even after this interview is posted, right? Um, we all have to make our own decisions, but I still think we are rock bottom relative to where we're going in the future, right?
Right. So, and everyone wants to know, like, well, when is it going to change? Right. I mean, like, who knows? Right. We, uh, you know, we can't plan. We can't plan that stuff. Um, you know, like I, as a, as a, the company itself, like I don't know how Derek can't plan when it's going to, um, <laughs> you know, when it's going to have that major step function, but all, all, all we can say is that it, it, the price needs to go up significantly, um, in order to secure the network and be able to release, you know, more, more coins and more supply, right. Because for Hedera, uh, part of the security of the network is that you, you can never have more than one third of the network taken over by any mm. one actor. Um, but, but less than one third, you're, you're still got a, a, a trust, you've got trust in the network. Um, so we need to make it so that the price, not make it, but we need it so that the, the price is high enough where someone can't just, some whale can't manipulate the market just but by buying so many of the coins and, mm. and then resulting in having one more than one third of them. Um, right. So th like I said, there's this is very thoughtful about the way that the tre you know, stuff's released from treasury. Um, everything is, is, you know, thought out from a compliance standpoint. Uh, Hedera kind of leans into regulation going, yeah, certainty in the market's gonna be helpful to our, to the people who are gonna use our network, right? So, so regulation's good. Um, you know, I think people just have a, a generally retail speculators have a uh, a knee jerk reaction to the word regulation. Like it just means put some rules in place. Uh, we could disagree on what regulations work and what what mm -hmm. regulations don't, but we shouldn't have a knee jerk reaction to regulations. Like, you know, there's there's a lot of things to discuss. Um, I think, and I would love to see more rules. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a rules person, so. I mean, I went to law school. I have a law degree, so rules make sense to me. Yeah. Um, otherwise, it's kind of the wild west, and we're not sure necessarily why one company's more ethical, doing better, whatever, than another. So, um, and, and then we I, want protections for speculators, because right now speculators have no protections. Yes, right? and, or maybe we don't and, want regulations for speculators. Depends on who you are. But um, personally, <laughs> I think we could probably do with some some regulation. Some things to prevent rug pulls like Squid Games, right? Uh, right. You know, because that's very root. That's very real. And you know, people come in with some money, and you know, people exit scam and things like that. And it's and it's not fun. You know, it's not fun for anyone. Right. We do have to take responsibility for getting involved in nonsense cryptos, right? I teach that every day, but these things do happen, and that's why um. People in this community, we've been screaming for regulatory clarity for a long time. Just clarity. Just let us clarity. know what the guardrails are, right? So we can play within that game because that is what Brad Garlinghouse at Ripple has been saying has been limiting adoption specifically in the U.S. So um, right. I, we all 100% resonate with exactly what you're saying. But um, kind of to, to go along those lines with clarity, we believe that will come more utility of, of not only um, XRP, the token that everyone in this community truly knows, but networks like Hedera and others, right? So um, something that I do want to ask is, so we have MTech showing a paper discussing Project New Dawn, right? And Hedera is mentioned. And what I'm curious to know is, will Hedera be involved in making or helping build the infrastructure for a U.S. central bank digital currency? Right. So great question. I don't know. the. So I could give you my perspective and what I think, but I have no inside knowledge. So I'm reading the same stuff you guys read. Um, okay. And and so, so Hedera uh, has been working with with MTech uh, to, I, I believe, just to describe like how it could be part of the solutions, right? Um, mm -hmm. Whether it's a particular bank is actually talking to MTech and Hedera about deployment, I just, I have no insight into, I hope so, but I, you know, I don't, I don't know. Um, what I will, what I will say here is I will, um, I just want to maybe prevent conflation of some ideas. So uh, for your audience, not that you indicated mm -hmm. any any misunderstanding um so hedera will never be the distributed ledger technology that is deployed for the central banks mm -hmm. because yeah. it's a public network it's not a private network right they'll they'll probably you know uh, whether it's something like ibm hyperledger r3 corda something else in that 
you know, enterprise DLT space, or it's some other, um, you know, network that I'm not even sure which ones are playing, or, you know, are vying for CBDCs. Um, mm -hmm. It will not be Hedera. Um, Hedera is a public network for public trust. And mm -hmm. so what I want your listeners to understand is where Hedera could and I hope will, and, and maybe I should say shall, I don't know, be deployed uh, would be for when central uh, CBDCs want to transact or yeah, transact outside of their own CBDC DLT. Um, and they want to transact, let's say, with a set of banks around the world, or, uh, you know, maybe it's not, well, yeah, they want to s banks around the world. Then they need a public network within which that they'd need to um, be able to, you know, to trust that tr those transactions had finality. Hedera has finality in seconds. Uh, they want to trust they have that throughput, that it can scale, like all, all of the same things we're looking for, but this would be for public trust. The reason I'm emphasizing this is, you know, I, I, I lurk in Reddit and um, uh, <laughs> That's I, great. I sometimes, I sometimes comment as me, you know, I'm not, I, I'm not, I'm not, I, I'm identified as, you know, Hedera strategist, you know, Deborah Farber. <laughs> That's so that right. it would carry weight, you know, if I had an opinion, um, I'd be like, no, I'm, I'm working there, guys. Like, um, and so uh, so there I'm seeing people really like getting frustrated, like, oh, or, or you know, looking at breadcrumbs that they, they're they they're streaming together these ideas or, or linking together these ideas that they find. And they're like, wait a minute, if Hyperledger, if IBM is here and IBM is on the, you know, um, the governance council for Hedera does that why would IBM be using this and not Hedera and you're like because IBM deploys you know uh distributed ledger tech for private organizations this is why they're a good partner so this is this is the reason I'm trying to explain I'm trying to uh educate that the, the CBDCs is is a multiplayer uh space and it's not Hedera or or, or bust it's it's going to be uh, several players for any CBDC um, architecture, uh, and that'll you know hopefully could include Hedera for for public consensus and trust. Yeah, very nice. Very, and I I think that's very important because we're good at putting connections together to things like oh we saw this and then the IBMs and all that, but then at the end of the day there's like some tech that <laughs> is involved in this as well that means yes it's a reality or no it's just you know some nonsense that we formulated so I'm right, very glad right. that, that that you um hammer it home that yes this is something that can happen but but really distinguish distinguish how um things can. Right really work right so that's very important um but kind of to stay on the topic of central bank digital currencies right because the xrp community ripple and and all that we're we're in the cbdc space like we we have our ears to the streets when it comes to that um ripple recently came out with the private ledger for for cbdc's and and things like that so i'm just like okay privacy let's talk about that <laughs> <laughs> what I'm curious to know is, um, as far as privacy for um for individuals are concerned, central bank digital currencies, I don't, I don't like them. Not really, right? I don't really like them. What is your take on the privacy aspect for normal citizens with central bank digital currencies? You know, it's a great question. I have to admit, uh, it's one I've kind of not dived deep enough in. I'm constantly still reading up on it myself. Um, because again, my perspective is like, I love the tech and I want to, you know, fix enterprise privacy problems. Right. Uh, so when you talk transactional privacy and individuals, it's, it's a different space. So hmm. I get the concept of wanting to keep cash, experience as being a, a fungible bearer, uh, bearer instrument, right? Uh, uh, that is not tracked anywhere, right? Like I, I get the desire to wanna to keep that uh, away from being tracked by others, mm -hmm. especially the government. Um, but I also work, I worked at Visa on the public global public policy team and my portfolio was security and privacy. And privacy was like literally this much, it was all security. <laughs> and for the most part, I was working a lot on cybercrime. Um, 
uh, cybercrime, biometric authentication. I mean, there were a bunch of issues, risk, but for the most part, I did a lot on cybercrime. And I really, truly, I've seen how much Visa has to try to combat lots of fraud. People go where the money is, right? We're seeing this with, we're seeing this now. You're seeing rug pulls because people go where the money is. Um, and I've seen KYC be super effective. Um, I've seen, you know, some of these things are really actually like intended to preserve the integrity of the networks and trust in the system. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so I, I don't, I don't align with a lot of the strong ideologies in crypto, um, mm -hmm. but I understand where they come from. And so I constantly reevaluate and ask myself, okay, is this, in my opinion, an absurd knee jerk reaction, or is this something of misunderstanding that this person has? This person being anybody on the internet, kind of in this amorphous space, I'm, I'm putting them all in this box right now. That's a little unfair. But I guess my point is we have rules where, you know, at least you don't have to track necessarily and explain to the government where your data is or, or who, you, who you're selling something to or where it's going unless it's over uh, $10,000, right? Um, is that the right level? I don't know. I mean, I'm not, I'm not in it enough to know about me. Oh, it should really be 5,000 or no, it should be a hundred thousand or we shouldn't have it at all. Right. I think mm -hmm. we should have a number where we're start to track uh, money laundering and potential fraud and all of that. I mean, I think that in, 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 in I think we need it for integrity and trust in the system. Uh, so, you know, I don't know. I don't know, though. I don't think the Wild West is is necessarily and, and have the government track nothing. It's a difficult but, dilemma, right? It's, it's a, a difficult, difficult dilemma. dilemma. Yeah. I, I'm still I'm still thinking about it. Let's put it that way. Right. Like I'm still I'm not in that space enough to really have an opinion that I drive home and go, this is what you should all be thinking. Right. But I'm just giving you a little bit about where I'm at right now. And, um, you know, I'm not I'm not in crypto for the ideology behind the original uh, blockchain and original, you know, uh, yes. cryptocurrencies. So, you know, I don't know. It's more like convince me, right? <laughs> I know, I know. I'm not trying to convince you either. I was just curious to know what your thoughts were on that. But that's, I like that take. I like that take. Right. I mean, my thoughts are, I think we should be looking at all sides of like, how do we make sure that we are appropriately protecting people, but not protecting them to a point of paternalistic, like restricting them, right? So mm -hmm. I look at things like, Look, uh, you know, when we weren't, we, we, if we're not accredited investors, we were never allowed to invest in, um, yes. you know, lar like the F Google and, you know, uh, AOL at the time, right? Like mm -hmm. we weren't allowed to because we were not considered sophisticated enough to. So mm -hmm. um, the Jobs Act actually allowed crowdfunding, regulation crowdfunding, and now we are allowed to uh, invest alongside uh, as, as, not, as just regular people uh, invest alongside accredited investors. That's cool. That brought us into the fold. It was like, before it was like, you're too much, you're not educated enough to be able to make this, yes. um, you know, potential investment that can actually be wealth and life-changing. And then, it, you know, a lot of people are kind of pissed off about that. Like, don't tell me I'm not sophisticated enough. You're now denying me this opportunity to make a lot of money off of what I think the future looks like. Mm -hmm. So, well, that's happening now. People are allowed to do that, right? And you're allowed to invest in that through regulation, crowdfunding, and through crypto. Yeah. Um, but crypto is going to have its own set of unique challenges that I don't think it's off for the government to put some rules around. I don't. I know I'm going to get a lot of flack for this. I don't think that. Oh, okay. I think we're think a nation of rules. <laughs> we're in the we're we're on the same boat. We're my my audience. We're, we 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 know we need regulation, but we we're concerned about how hard the regulation could be right that's always the concern because it's a great it's a concern we should all have absolutely because, because a little old gary over there gary's having a blast let's <laughs> saying that rules are clear and all that i'm not we're not a big fan of gary i don't know if you know that <laughs> but <laughs> gary at the cc he's been putting oh oh got it i'm little... like who's gary <laughs> shows you how closely i'm following now i get it now i get it <laughs> gary goes um up. He's been throwing a little bit of a wrench in our things, but let's see what he does. Right, with XRP, sure, sure. Let's see what he does, but Makes sense. It, that's a personal thing with me and him. Let's see where that Right, I mean, and then it's a personal thing, right? It's a Gary thing, maybe, and not necessarily a, I mean, we're all going to have our own opinions, right? I don't, I think yeah. government's workable. Other people want to just tear down government. So, like, we're not on the same page. <laughs> no, it's okay, it's okay. Yeah.
let's see let's see so i do have this um this one thing i was curious about so a little while ago the hedera governing council allocated around five billion to help the yeah. ecosystem develop um where have you seen the most development happening with those funds and also you did say um there are still funds that are going to be deployed in the future. Do you have kind of like maybe a little sneak peek as to where that could go down the road? I like poking around to see if I could get something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, so, so first of all, I think this is super exciting because what this is gonna, what this is doing, right? Cause so many people were uh, upset. When I say people, I mean, Redditors, right? Twitter, or Twitter people like, the social media uh, retail speculators uh, have been frustrated that the Hedera team has not been uh, marketing on their behalf, on, on, on retailers' behalf. Um, mm -hmm. And that's something that the Hedera team feels pretty, you know, restricted by. Like, look, they're trying to not do uh, anything that's going to hurt them regulatorily until there's more clarity around what they are able to do or aren't. Um, especially since the, mm. the Hedera wants to be seen as a commodity, it's a public utility, not as a security. Yeah. Um, and so as in walking this line, um, you know, it, they have to take a conservative approach. And so what this is doing is giving the Hedera Foundation, uh, the HBAR Foundation, uh, a separate independent organization that now has lots of HBAR to give out, to give grants out to, to companies that are going to have lots of transactions and high throughput. And so the goal is now that the HBAR Foundation is kind of the, you know, providing the capital to mm -hmm. companies that are saying, look, we have all this, you know, all these transactions and throughput we're going to put on the network. And these, the HBAR you're giving us today, we're going to put that right back on the network through these transactions. Um, you know, maybe they're going to, maybe they'll, They'll use like, hey, said a, a company might receive the grants and and then give out some free H bar to help drive adoption on their service, which will mm -hmm. drive adoption of the network, which will drive up right. So we do this with lots of different companies and give them millions of dollars. I mean, we have billions to give, but that's going to be over time, right? It's a, a hundred year company, yeah. uh, and plus it'll go up in value. Is the is the theory? Um, and so now the H bar Foundation has a lot more flexibility to come out with more. A little marketing focused, a little more sponsorship of. I saw it yesterday that they sponsored a particular uh, influencer's blog. Um, so you know there seems to be a lot more flexibility there. Uh, what was the original question? <laughs> oh, where have you seen the most development ah, with those funds? Right, yet? right, right. Well, I'm not sure. I could say uh, so. I am in some discussions uh, because there. I am a. I'm an advisor as well. Besides my work with the Hedera, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, I'm a part-time privacy strategist for them. I'm also an advisor to uh, just under ten uh, privacy tech and ethical tech startups, um, mm -hmm. and then actually a few companies that are doing some work in, with Hedera right now as well. Um, I'm not going to mention things, but there are a few of the companies that I've either invested in or have, um, or I'm advising that are seeking funds from the Hedera H bar foundation. Um, I would say that right now, I can't tell you like where I see it going. Cause I only see my slice oh. of the world, but what I can say is that it will take a little, there, the Hedera, the H bar foundation is getting its sea legs, right? Once it was announced, they were, they were a small team before they scaled up and got that money to scale up, you know, taking in all these requests from companies that are seeking money from them and they have to do their due diligence. They're not giving out just a hundred grand here. I mean, we're talking millions of dollars, right? They've got to do their due diligence. So it's taking a little longer than you all want to see some announcements about what will be uh, given grants uh, to drive network adoption. Um, but uh, that hasn't happened yet and I can't steal their thunder. I don't know enough to say this is where it's all going. I only know my small slice of what I've seen. And I can tell you that the team is working really hard right now, like, like iterations and iterations of, of, of the proposals and the, you know, just to make sure that I's are dotted, T's are crossed um, because they don't even have the processes in place. They're creating them right now, right? So, you know, keep that in mind. Like they're working really hard to 
to let us know, uh, you know, and, and bring these grants uh, to fruition. And it just hasn't happened yet. It'll drop when it drops. Yes, yes. I knew I knew I had to poke around, but that was yeah. plenty of information that got me even more excited. So really, thank you for saying I, I think you should be excited. I mean, the big thing about Hedera uh, having the HBAR Foundation, you know, we what we saw in the market was, you know, what we normally see, uh, you know, buy the rumor, sell the news, right? Mm -hmm. So so once that was announced, what the big announcement was, right, which was huge. It, you know, we saw Hedera drop again because this is a completely irrational market anyway. Um, yes, yes. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and that's all I'll say about the market. But uh, we should keep in mind that the announcement itself of the new HBAR Foundation, while huge, is nothing compared to the grants they're going to give out and the announcements when they make them, right? Like, it was only the first part. That was only part one. Um, so we should stay excited. I mean, five billion dollars is like a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> laughably exciting. Like it's just mind blowing excitement. So you know, we should continue that excitement. It's just I think we've got these um, short attention spans as humans these days. We've been, you know, we want everything like quick and now, and it's really hard to hold on to the long term because. Dara is building out a long-term vision. And honestly, I, I think it's the right move, uh, yes. but it's also hard to wait and sit and wait when you're just so excited for the future to be here. Right. If there's one thing I could do better than most people is I could wait and not, and, and I like doing less specifically on the investment side. It's like things like this. I teach people. I'm like, people do a little bit of research and learning how to buy an asset or, or a stock. People do less research, learning how to sell it but almost no mm. one does any research on how to own what they already bought, right? Me, I like I like the idea of owning like of owning what I have, right? And interviews like this, this makes me want to own even more. I'm going <laughs> after this call, Jordan. <laughs> right? Oh, that's funny. But but it's very important, and I really appreciate you saying all that because you did hit a great point, stating that there has plenty more money to deploy. And it can be the, the, the price is still yet to appreciate in value as well. So it, it'll probably be more money to deploy in the future than we can even imagine. So it's, it's very exciting. It's very right. Very and exciting. it's in the hands of the H bar foundation, which is completely independent, separate organization with like, well, if, uh, you know, affiliation that it was like birthed from Hedera. Um, mm -hmm. That's where the affiliation ends. And then of course, some people, well, it's not where it ends because some people from Hedera moved over to the HBAR Foundation, but they're run separately. They have completely different missions um, mm -hmm. and they are not in any way, you know, jointly uh, collaborating or colluding on anything, right? So, so that's very important. Hedera could not have done a lot of the things that the HBAR Foundation being an independent organization can do. And, and I think that that's going to, uh, yeah, that's exciting. It's exciting to see what they end up doing in terms of accelerating the ecosystem uh, development and, and bringing people onto the platform because that's really their mission right now. Yeah, that's yeah. excellent. And kind of along those lines, I'm going to get to the audience questions because one of oh, those has, has to go with uh, what you just said. Um, Patrick asked if an individual was looking to build their project on Hedera, how would someone go about starting the process? Um, I'm aware of the grant Hedera is offering to individuals. Can you go a little deeper into that? Yes. So if somebody is interested, like they have a problem they know they want to solve, they know they want to solve it with distributed ledger technology. Uh, maybe they don't necessarily know where to go to. They're thinking about building it on Hedera, but they don't necessarily, maybe they're not a dev themselves. Um, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> hopefully you won't get inundated with this, but uh, what I normally do is I just, you know, email Christian Hasker, make the intro and say, you know, Christian's the chief marketing officer at Hedera. Um, so it's usually I pass them off to someone on the, um, you know, to, to, to Christian and I say, hey, look, this person's look, looking for a, a developer advocate uh, that's going to help them like really flesh out like you know, what is it they're trying to build? What aspect, is it an NFT? Is it uh, an app net? Is it, you know, a DAO? Like what, you know, and based on the type of problem being solved, you know, is it 
Hedera consensus service or Hedera token service that they need, right? So really just guide them on like what product, where, you know, and then uh, state, hey, here are some of the, uh, you know, system integrators that we work with that can help you build this or, you know, um, so there is, everybody is somewhere on their journey and uh, we try to meet them where they're at. And so what I would suggest is to reach out to Christian and unless Christian has a different, you know, way, uh, a, a different intake um, way, uh, you know, that's that's the only way I know right now. Um, or reach out to someone who is a developer advocate on, on, on social media and ask them, you know, hey, who do I go to? And they'll, they'll I'm sure be very helpful. Uh, oh. So if I were to personally message Christian and be like, uh, I need a developer to build me an app on Hedera, we could get some help because I have an idea that really kept me up at, late, at night last night. I really want to see it through. So is that possible for me? Is it? Yeah, I mean, uh, that that's that's what the developer advocates are for. So uh, my understanding, yeah, is that that's the case, that he'll be like, uh, what do you, you know, he'll either take the call himself uh that might not be sustainable in the long term but right now, <laughs> uh or be like oh you're doing this and pass it on to somebody else on the team who who he thinks would be like a a a, a good developer advocate for that particular scenario um because you know if someone's like i want to build something for central banks and then you know versus i want to build an nft solution it would be vastly different people he'd be yes, sending you to yes, yes. as you'd imagine yes. um and so, uh, yeah, I mean, he's been very, very available on social media when it comes to those things. And he continues to tell people, yeah, reach out when X, Y, Z or reach out to me and I'll help you with that. So, um, you know, uh, <laughs> hopefully Christian's not like, thanks for sending everybody my way. No, no, he wouldn't. This is this is what this is what we're here for. Right. And I'm, you know, even my myself, I'm very active on, on Reddit and social uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, because, you know, the marketing team's job, and I am working with the marketing team, um, is to engage externally, right? Is to uh, get people to understand our market and, you know, and reach out when they when they have questions so we can put you on the right path. And for any of you guys at home wondering why I was asking or what, what I was doing, yes, I do have something that I'm curious to see if I could get help with, but also for all of you, it's about showing you the process where if you want to maybe bring an idea to this world, how would that go? You know, how would that go? And, and Doug, yeah. I think you answered that for, for the audience at home. And it'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, how much of that moves over to the HBAR Foundation versus stays within the Hedera proper. Uh, yes. You know, so that might change. It might be in the future that there's more developer advocates at the HBAR Foundation, but, you know, for now, I would. For now, I suggest going to Christian, just pinging him on Twitter or something. Yes, yes, without a doubt, guys, without a doubt. Now we're almost done. We're almost done. I don't want to take up too much of your time because I know you're very busy. But um, there's one question here that states from Raymond: Can you run a recommend any book related to your field of expertise? Ooh, yes. So now none of the books include distributed ledger technology. <laughs> so my area of expertise um, that I would most want to promote would be strategic privacy by design. And that's by Jason Kronk. Um, another really good one that's uh, not as recent, but it's from my like professional idol and friend, uh, Michelle Dennity. And um, that is the Privacy Engineers Manifesto. Um, those are two Engineer. seminal works that I think would really help enlighten people to what does it mean to help with data protection and privacy within like an enterprise or how do you think about it as you're building a product or service? Hmm. Like what are the risks and how do you work backwards from avoiding those risks and you know, how do you think about that risk and break it up into, uh, you know, different pieces and how do you architect for it? And it's, uh, it's good stuff. Yes. Excellent. Ray, I hope you got that one. Um, that was a powerful one right there. Now, two more questions, one from the audience and then the last one for me. And then maybe Jordan has another one to throw in there because, oh, you don't? <laughs> Way to ruin it. No, I'm kidding. Um, so it says here from Patrick, 
Um, thank you for your time and sharing your insights. This question is, is Hedera implementing security protocols and maintaining privacy controls to not solicit your information to third party entities or things along that, like, that uh, nature? Um, so, yes. Uh, so, so, okay. So my white paper that uh, should come out this week, and if it doesn't, I'm, <laughs> I don't know. it should come out this week. Sweet. Um, it's a great, a great opportunity for me to explain how I address the white paper. So at first I'm talking about, I give a crash course in data protection law. I really strip out the legalese and just kind of like get to the bolts, the nuts and bolts of like, what are the rights that exist that when you're an organization you now become obligations on your part? Like as a company, you have the obligation that if someone says, I want to know all the personal data that you collect about me, that you are then able to show that person, here's all the data I collect about you. Uh, mm -hmm. That means you needed to set up your services so that you could be able to display that information. Mm -hmm. And it's much harder if you've been around a you know, 30 year company that needs to do this, because then you have to like discover where that information is and what's connected to it and all that. You know, it's, it's a Herculean effort in, for large companies right now. Yes. Um, what's that? Yes, 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 it is. It yeah. is. So, so as a result, uh, so I strip that all down and I really explain like, here's what data protection law means in the context of DLT, data minimization, right? Like that's what, that's what tokenization is. You're minimizing your exposure to the personal data, um, but you're still identifiable on the back end, right? So, so NFTs, all this, we could talk another time about how the future will be tokenized. The future is um, not just tokenized, but pseudonymized. So when we think about tokenization from a privacy perspective, we think about it's pseudonymous data, right? Not anonymous. If we had anonymous data, we would not be able to do NFTs. So, no. so there's an exciting world here anyway. And then, um, so basically what I want to say, it's all built into how the network was created to enable these different um, things. And then I talk about how Hedera, Hedera's network services uh, are you know, what are the privacy characteristics of those network services? So rather than get into very specifics right now, like what are the privacy characteristics of an account? What are the privacy characteristics of, you know, HCS? Um, I want to just kind of throw out there that pseudonymization is really like the theme we should be thinking about, um, data minimization, and then the white paper will really like hone in on what some of those uh, other areas are that you can kind of pull together. And then in the end, I give like uh, some advice on how to architect, uh, you know, with privacy in mind and avoiding some of the pitfalls. Hmm. Like for instance, how do you delete data when it's an immutable ledger, right? Well, don't put, because you have to delete personal data when someone says, I want you to delete all the data about me. This is why privacy and data protection is essential conversation in an enterprise, you know, DLT world, um, because global laws are still applicable, right? It, I know that crypto is the wild west for some, but you know, it's not like privacy has not been thought about for decades and decades with lots and lots and lots of uh, academics and you know from all over the place. Uh, it's not just I want you know to be not identified during a transaction, you know, and be anonymous. Like that is an edge case in most our lives. We don't walk around with masks on our face, obs obscuring our identity every day, unless it's a pandemic. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, this... We are ourselves and it's like, no, I'm gonna choose in this context what I wanna share with you or what I don't, but I'm still Deborah Farber in this context. I'm not sitting yeah. here with a bag over my head and just you know, voice modulation to make it sound like you can't tell who I am. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so so there's a lot to still be learned because I think definitely in the crypto space, people are still thinking about anonymity equals privacy. And if you don't have anonymity, you're not even worth talking about. And you're like, not to say that Hedera doesn't have an ability to, you know, uh, you know remain anonymous in ways and, and such. You can, in the way that it's deployed. My point is that's not the thing you optimize for. That's just yeah. one flavor of how do you obfuscate how do you protect people? And it's done, and it really should only be done in, in very in edge cases, um, in, in my opinion. Or it's done to, you know, so so that you could have free speech 
in an environment, it's more of a free speech issue to be anonymous than it is a privacy issue. Cause, and I, I here's my last thing I'll say about it. I, I like to compare it to in the security world when people say, um, you know, how do, how do I make sure that I'm the most protected in the security world? And the, the answer is unplug. If you unplug your computer, your computer has no risk, right? Yes. I mean, arguably, like maybe there's some risk on it, but like it has no risk from the internet if it's not plugged in. Um, mm. Well, it's the same thing. If your identity is unplugged and you literally are anonymous, then there is no privacy problem. Sure. But it there's it's not about privacy anymore. You've just rendered it like no one can know who you are that's so there's no longer a privacy problem but you're still not you're just basically unplugged right yes. i think privacy we have to think about all the things about when we are known as a human being in a, in a public space mm -hmm. and then making sure that all the actors who have access to any of that any of the information about myself when i share it is not um going to use that information in, and it gives me the trust to be able to share that information and that that they're not going to use it in a nefarious way or be irresponsible with it or use it to surveil me or use it right that's privacy and by just claiming anonymity we're avoiding all the conversation about that nuance of privacy yes and that's an important distinction that can't be stressed enough guys very very important now what I'll say is for the common man, and this will be me kind of wrapping things up as well. For the common man, what privacy measures can we take when it comes to maybe um, maybe our phones, maybe computers, things like that? How can we best protect ourselves just in our everyday lives? Yeah, well, I think uh, honestly, everything comes with uh, anything technology related is going to come uh, with a set of defaults. And so I would just make sure that you understand the, um, you know, all the different toggles and things and, 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 and settings that, uh, you know, might give you a, more of a sense of, of privacy. So the way things should be built ethically and according to like most laws today, uh, it should be built with, um, you know, privacy by design and default, which means that by default, all the toggles are set to the, the most, restri most restrictive where you share the least. So that if you wanna share more, then you go to the defaults and say, I'd like to share more about myself, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Most companies don't really respect that. I mean, it's by law, this is the, this is the, the European Union came, you know, GDPR requires this by default. California requires by default, um, but we're still not really seeing it actually being built like that all the time, right? We, we see things where toggles are like, oh, you, you know, your toggle is on so that you're opting into our newsletter or, uh, you know, like things like that should not be that way. So I would say just make sure, go through all your defaults on, you know, make sure that you have all your settings, maybe quarterly go through and kind of take a look at what your settings are and then reassess what your, your threat model is. So for me, I've been saying for a long time, I am not a very private person. Like I actually might be more of an overshare, right? But many people might actually consider me more of an overshare. And I don't even mean this conversation. I mean, generally, I'm not generally a private person. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but even I, I'm getting much more exposure than I'm used to, right? Like yesterday I watched a YouTube blogger for five minutes, read my long ass, like, you know, uh, Reddit comment. And that was the essence of the post, uh, the, 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 the video, and it's been viewed 2000 times. And all he did was read my Reddit comment. Now I'm not upset by it, but boy, do I feel a little exposed, right? I feel a little like 2000 people watch this guy read for five minutes, something just, that could have been like a link to my Reddit comment. But just wait until people watch this one. <laughs> well, right. And don't, don't you think I thought that too? And so I'm now <laughs> rethinking too, how exposed do I feel? I might want to restrict some settings on my social media or whatever, because I'm, this is outside of my domain and now outside of my comfort zone that you have a much wider, broader audience. My point here is to share that privacy is about context. Context matters always, uh, depending, you, you think about the context in which you'd share information with a doctor versus some ran, rando on the street you meet, right? Like context matters. And so you have to reevaluate over time what you're comfortable with. And so I do that quarterly, others can do that whenever, whatever pace you want. Um, but that's my suggestion is just always reevaluate your current thinking, your current 
feelings of being of exposure or you know what, what whatever whatever goes into your own thought process but that's what i would suggest to you excellent excellent yeah deborah what i'll say is um i don't think i have any more questions jordan has stated he doesn't have any more questions <laughs> and the vips haven't had any more questions come up either so, well, I've answered everything. Nobody has anything have, else to ever ask. I have all the answers. <laughs> there is one. There is one if you want to look after Raymond Ball. And if Deborah, we can steal you for two more minutes. Oh, okay, okay. Me. Yeah, this just came up. All right. Final question. Does Hedera see Global ID as a partner or a competitor? It's a good question. I don't even know who Global ID is. <laughs> Global ID I'm so is, sorry. is a Greg Kids company in crypto greg kid he used to be at ripple a uh, uh, early investor in oh, twitter I see. Yeah, yeah. so someone i should know i just don't i'm so sorry um i there's a lot i need to learn about xrp too and because i haven't been able to buy it during the time i've been into crypto because of mm -hmm. the le le uh, legislation i have to admit i have have not done my own research enough yet um there so i will i promise you i will do more of it after this call and maybe i'll even like shoot you a Twitter message or two to, to uh, send me on the right track. But I, I haven't been following that. I'm so sorry. No, no worries. No worries. Yeah. But um, now we've officially answered every question. Deborah. Okay. <laughs> um, I have this has been say, so much fun. Thank I have you. to say again, thank you so much for taking the time out. You're an absolute beast. Um, I've learned a lot today and I still have um, so much that I, I know I'm going to want to ask in the future. So um, um it's well, great. Be, I'd be glad to come back. So, uh, you know, it's it, going to be been a pleasure. I love I could talk about this stuff all day. So, you know, <laughs> I like it. I love we'll it. We'll definitely have you on another time to make sure once Hedera has more of the compliance thing going on in the world in the go. United States, then we're really going to see how how uh, special this one can be. Right. So Excellent. everybody, thanks for tuning in. Deborah, thank you for being here. Jordan, my brother, that was another great one. Um, peace out, guys. Much love. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.